closer a little bit. Oh, I'm good. How's it going? <laughs> it's going great. It's going really well. You look very beautiful as usual. Thank you. It's a big day for you. Oh, yes, it is. Right? Yeah. My, yeah. Because this, this little baby is coming out today, right? Yeah. Congrats. Great. Best of. Best of Emily Furtado. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's congr been congratulations. Exciting. It's really amazing. I mean, that's like 10 years of hard work right there. For sure. <laughs> for sure it is. For sure. Um, yeah, I actually can't believe it. I can't believe 10 years has passed. You know, when I put out Wonelli, I, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know what the future held for me. And I thought, who knows? It could be back in the year back at university. <laughs> Maybe I'll just try this out. But here I am 10 years with the fans and um, just the music has kept me well addicted to doing what I do. I have to congratulate you with the Grammy, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's still really fresh. <laughs> I, I, I think I still have uh, leftover adrenaline from that night. Yeah. I was so happy. I was fully shocked. So I'm just like still buzzing from that, you know? Yeah. How much of a surprise was that? huge it's my first spanish language album so already just recording the album and meeting all those amazing latin artists um the love from the fans and the latin world you know around the world um to win the grammy was like what you know when you just think about 10 years of making music you know personally and artistically what does that mean to you when you just look at all of those different songs and you go back in time and all of those memories like what what does it mean to you personally and artistically um I feel really proud and I feel happy and I feel lucky, blessed. Um, I've always seen music as sort of a shared experience, a community experience. I think that that comes from growing up playing in, in a in band, like a concert band with my trombone. Because <laughs> it, it was it's never about you as an individual instrumentalist, it's about the group. It's about the whole band. So I think that's why I do so many collaborations and work with so many people because I, I look at my career and I look I listen to the Greatest Hits album and I think, wow, think of all the wonderful people I've met along this path and just the amazing producers I've had the chance to work with and artists I've met and it's just really a celebration. I, I really do what I love. Yeah. I really yeah. I, I love what I do, do what I love the most and music is my language. It's the way I speak with the world. Yeah. And um and the way I speak with myself, sometimes I might not know how I feel about something that happened to me until I write a song about it. <laughs> and then I go, Oh, I get it now. Like there are songs where years later I don't get it. And then I hear it and I go, Oh, I know what I was going through. It's really weird. Like songs songwriting's always been this really um healing sort of experience for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you are really a musical sponge because you get inspired by so many different things and so many different genres and then you really create your own own sound out of that. Like, you know, you for example, when you take folklore and you were ex experimenting with so many different genres and instruments, I mean, you, you are really a, a sponge, I think, in that way. I definitely am a sponge. Um, you know, I think it's from my upbringing, you know, just growing up listening to so much Portuguese music and then pop music. Um, we had a lot of different music around the house and I think it just inspired me a lot. And then I think growing up in Canada as well, where it's a real mosaic of cultures and ethnicities and um, you can really learn a lot about other cultures growing up in Canada because um, a lot of people really retain their identity. It's not so much of a... Um, it's not so much a melting pot, it's more of a mosaic. So um, I've just grown up with that. And now I just, I think also because I see music as, it's sort of my personal language, I feel like it has no borders, because language has no borders, right? So yeah. for me, for my music doesn't either. I can, I can become a chameleon and I can, I can make sense of lots of different styles. It's kind of my personal challenge and my joy to kind of make my voice be able to blend with a lot of other voices and be able to adapt and like assimilate things, um, bring things together. I think it's just a part of who I am. And I always go back when I when I listen to your music. I always go back to One Trick Pony because for me that's really uh, describes a lot of <laughs> sort of your what you're about. You know, when you say you're identical to none and you're identical to some, who wants to be some, right? <laughs> did I say, did I I say, say that, that right? 
Yeah, who wants to be a sum? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. And I think that's kind of been a thread running through my music has been this sort of fierce sort of um, pledge to, to individuality and individualism, even if at times it's not, it's quite risky or it's quite like bizarre or like people get confused. You know, I think I've gotten a little kick out of confusing people. <laughs> I think I've got like a little bit of a wicked sense of humor. So in a way, it's been my, I'm always making little jokes along. But I mean, that's why I named my first album Monelli, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I knew people would write that anyway, so I thought I'd beat them to the punch. Um, but on Folklore, yeah, One Trick Pony is about that. It's about this sort of, I don't know, I'm always trying to assert my place in the world. And I think I'll always have that chip on my shoulder. I think I was kind of born with a chip on my shoulder. <laughs> a little bit of an attitude. I don't know if I got it from, you know, my dad, who... Uh, Never was a rock star, star, but definitely was to the people that knew him, know him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's, it's I guess, I, I guess what some would call like a swagger of some kind. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, looking back those 10 years, how has your writing changed, do you think? Uh, my writing, jeez. Hmm. Well, very recently, um... After writing the Spanish album, my writing has changed for my upcoming English project, Lifestyle, which I'm recording right now. I've been able to express sort of emotional intricacies and uh, certain sensibilities in Spanish that I, I had challenges describing, you know, in the past with English. And so I've really got to this place of nuance I guess you could say through the Spanish album and and now with my English album I feel like I'm being more expressive and I'm, I'm being a little more revealing if you know what I mean mm -hmm. I'm not really hiding behind the lyrics so much I'm kind of really like I'm in them a little bit more so so that's as a result of um, exploring um, Spanish and performance and in, in writing Talking about lifestyle, do you are there any uh, collaborators that you can confirm at this time? Whether that's other artists or producers or songwriters. Um, one song um, that I'm working on right now, I wrote with um, Mike Angelicos from Passion Pit, the lead singer of Passion Pit, and Ooh. he also sings backup vocals on it, and it's really, really pretty and cool. Um, I'm working extensively and often with um, Salam Remy. And him and I uh, did Night is Young and Girlfriend in the City for Greatest Hits. And we did Fuerte and Suficiente Tiempo para Mi Plan, my Spanish album. So we have a good connection, him and I. We've been having fun. I feel like this album, it's eclectic in the way that Wonelli was eclectic. Um, and it's also very inspired by sort of alternative sounds. It has an edge to it, but it's... It's also very organic in the intent. Mm -hmm. So um, I think fans are really going to like it. They're going to be really happy with it. So it will be more of your brand of world pop, like you call it? Or, or is it more of an urban feel to it? It's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. It's really sort of like a mix. Yeah, it's kind of... There's some urban stuff. There's some very hip hop stuff. It's it's, but then there's some stuff that's more dancey, and there's just some stuff that's more like ethereal, kind of. Yeah. So, well, I, I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I can't wait to put it out. I can't wait till people can hear it. All of the songs that you've recorded are your babies, so they're all very special to you. But is there a particular time that you look back at with with fond, great fondness? You know, I have to say it was really fun writing a song for the European Football Championships in Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, writing the song Forza because FIFA had asked us to do it. So it was, it was almost like we had been commissioned, you know? <laughs> like a painter would be commissioned, commissioned to write this song, especially for soccer, especially for the final game in Lisbon. It was like this really healthy pressure on us. And... Um, We just had so much fun crafting the song, and, and it really came from out of the inspiration of my Portuguese fans saying, Forza, Forza, Nelly, Forza, when I, when I would see them at my concerts in Portugal or around the world, I'd see the Azorian flags, the Portuguese flags, and that really inspired me early on in my career, and so, so for Forza, which is on my second album, that's, that's what inspired the chorus, and also the fact that I'd grown up listening to so much Portuguese folk music, and it just, the melody really came out of listening to those old 
Azorian church songs and melodies. So, so that song, and then we invited Bella Fleck, the uh, virtuoso banjo player, on it. And so it really kind of just has it all. And when I perform it live, it always feels fantastic. Um, you know, one that stands out for me too is when we uh, uh, wrote uh, Say It Right in Miami, Tim and I, and it was a really, really spooky vibe that night. It was like four in the morning and everyone was really tired and this song just emerged, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's really um, kind of magical and I still don't really know, what, I can't really describe in words what the song's about, even though I wrote the lyrics, so. Um, but I guess I think the best songs are like that. You know? That just, sort of happen. just Yeah, and you, you can't describe them. They just are. Yeah. But with you, it's almost always about such great energy that you pack into songs, whether that's a ballad, you know, like Try, or, you know, a ferocious stomper like Man Eater, which is like, <laughs> you know, just grabs you and you just have to move to it. You know, you always inject it with so much emotion, which is, I think, you know, is really your brand of music. Thank you so much. That's so. That's so kind. Well, that, um, that's what I get out of it, yeah. That's so cool, and I think now that you said that, um, maybe it's because I feel when I make music, I remember even being a little girl and being on the piano and kind of just jamming, just kind of playing. There was a sense of escape I got from that, and there was a sense of like journey that I got from that all the time that I think um, has stayed with me, which is when I write a new song, I just feel like I'm being carried away into another dimension. And um, I can see the whole thing. I can hear the melody. I can hear. I can. The lyrics and melody come out at the same time. It's like I'm capturing some type of moment. Um, but I like to share happiness, and I think that's why Night Is Young is so happy because I really wanted to share like a jolt of just positive energy and just the idea of like reflecting in the moment, looking forward to the future, um, thinking fondly of the past, just kind of really carpe diem, which I think. We all have to remember to do sometimes, which I'm doing right now, definitely. <laughs> After Thursday night, and now today, it's like, oh my gosh. If you, could have, <laughs> if you could have dinner with anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh. I would have dinner with both of my um, deceased grandmothers from Portugal. Oh. Both of them in the same room, and me. That would be fabulous. And my daughter with me. <laughs> that would be wonderful. A meeting of generations, that, that would be awesome, yeah. Yeah. What, what, what's your favorite song of the year so far? Um, of all time? No, of, of the year. Oh, the year! Oh boy. Um, one song I've really enjoyed is on the Twilight soundtrack, Eclipse, Twilight Eclipse, and it's um, the Florence and, Florence and the Machine mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's called heavy, but the hook is, I'm so heavy. You know that one? Mm -hmm, yeah. Heavy in your arms. Yeah, 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 that yeah. Really good. I really like Robin dancing on my own. Oh, she's amazing, isn't she? Yes. yes. I really like Janelle Monet, um, Cold War. Good song, you know? Yeah, great, great tracks. Yeah. Am I actually still moving for you? Yes. Okay, good. Because oh. you, you froze. <laughs> But you froze in a great position, so <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no, Hello? <laughs> can you see me? No, not yet, right? Now you see I me. I see your wonderful 8x10. There you are. Um, well, thank you very much. I know you have a very, very busy day. Congrats with greatest hits. Um, thank you so much. Congrats and, and good luck with um, um, recording Lifestyle. Thank you so much. It was great speaking with you. Absolutely. And uh, hopefully we'll talk uh, soon again. Okay, awesome. Thank Take you, care. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Bye. <laughs> Bye.